What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Ori. Welcome back to AM Island Vibes. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing all right. Today, we're back with another reaction video. Today, we're going to be reacting to NBA warning signs that were right in front of us the whole time, but we didn't realize. And I mean, but I don't know what this whole thing's about. I guess it's signs. I don't know. But we're going to see what we're going to get into it. If you guys are new to the channel, smash the like button, subscribe, comment all that good stuff down below. All right? With that being said, let's get into the video. I hope this ain't no Illuminati or... We all know that as adults, we don't really have much time to sit and relax for too long. Facts. People who have very busy lives tend to overlook certain things that was actually right in front of them this entire time. Whether it's someone trying to tell you something or just never really noticed a small detail on your screen that was essentially a warning sign for what was to come. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a combination of predictions, coincidences, and examples of foreshadowing that might have went completely over your head. So let's get started. I'm sure by now we've all heard about how Pistol Pete Maravich strangely predicted his very own death during an what? interview. There was no way even he himself thought that those words would actually translate to real life. Well, it looks like we should have been paying a little bit more closer attention Spooky. during Kobe's final game. First of all, before I get to that, have any of you guys noticed that a lot of special moments came at the free throw line for Kobe Bryant? His very first points he's ever scored of his entire illustrious career were produced at the charity strike. RIP his Kobe. 80th, along with his 81st point of that legendary 2006 performance, also were made at the line. When he passed Michael Jordan for third place on the all-time scoring list, it once again came by a pair of free throws. Okay. And what do you know, the very last point he ever scored was at the strike as well. Just something that I always took note of. And while everybody was giving a standing ovation to Kobe, when he checked out of his last game, nobody, including me, realized that those numbers would soon come into play in the near future. 4 0 one from this Sunday afternoon, five-time NBA wow. champion, former lead. 4-1, I thought 4 0 one. Kobe Bryant died earlier this afternoon in Los Angeles wow. and the helicopter crashed. Those 4.1 seconds left on the clock told a story. Just like the day when LeBron and the Lakers won this past championship. Try not to freak out when you hear this. The Lakers just won the title on October 11th, 2020. Now, what do you get when you add those numbers up? None other than 41. I don't have all the answers. Man, I feel like y'all doing too much now. If you ask me. Y'all doing now, too much. On. We're not done yet. This coincidence, if you even want to call it that, will literally set okay, me spooky though, I'm glad. If we go back even further, this little short film, or if you want to say commercial, should have been seen as another red flag. In 2011, Kobe Bryant, Bruce Willis, and Kanye West teamed up with Nike for a project literally titled The Black Mamba. And in it, Kobe relentlessly tries to get his hands on West, while several deadly assassins attempt to try and stop him. Towards the end, it looks like Kanye actually was able to flee the scene, but Kobe, being the assassin he was, picks up some sort of bomb and throws it directly at the helicopter, which, as you can see, causes it to explode. Now, fast forward to the tragic event that took place on January 26th of this year. Many fans were absolutely shocked at the similarity they shared with one another, and as a result, this commercial was resurfacing everywhere on social media. It was almost unbelievable, making many of us question, were they trying to tell us something all along? This is just scary. Here we have a Pizza Hut commercial about a year ago, starring Maria Taylor, that must have had a feeling about the absence of fans before it became reality. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You can't have a football game without the fans. Yeah, you can. Yeah, Learn that the hard way. That's what we should just not have this spoke on a lot. That's why we're quiet. And you can't have football without the hut. That's actually pretty insane, but this one is almost unexplainable. Remember when the Heat fans decided to head out early during game? I remember that. Them bosses were trying to get back in. That the game was pretty much over, and then they got a big. Go, James! Go, James! Go, James! 
clutch shot to tie the game. But yes, Erski. Not allowed back in the building. No, don't let him back in. Recently came across this 2005 Toyota commercial that looks like it foreshadowed what was to come eight years later. Man, what a blowout. Well, at least we beat the traffic. And the heat of Titan, what a comeback! As you just saw, Phil Jackson looked like he just got back from Yoda. the future wearing that Jedi robe looking thing. But Phil Jackson was the warned coach those Heat fans Spurs. to stay loyal to their team, possibly giving them a heads up in advance. I can't even wrap my head around just how accurate that commercial was. I find it suspicious that they chose to base it around Miami fans instead of like Houston Rockets fans because before T-Mac pulled off one of the greatest comebacks of all time, Tracy McGrady actually left the game prematurely as well and would go on to find out about that epic comeback on the radio in their cars on the way home. That event literally took place around the same time that this commercial came out. So it would make more sense to use that fan base as an example. But no, for some strange reason, they went with the Heat fans. Odd, right? Oh gosh. Come on, shall break. And we'll be right back. Back in 2016, State Farm teamed up with Chris Paul, Kevin Garnett, DeAndre Jordan, Kevin Love, and Damian Lillard to form a fictional family the called Hoopers. the Hoopers. They released several commercials during the NBA playoffs that were a lot of fun, but they had no idea that they unknowingly predicted the following year, 2017, offseason. Well, at least to a certain extent. The first example was when the father of the family, Chris Paul, has a little talk about the birds and the bees to his teenage son, Kevin Love, changing the phrase to the hawks oh. and the horns. So I see him walking around acting all cavalier. I think it's about time we had that talk. Hey, cavalier. No way. Dad, I'm not going to talk about that with you. Well, just a year later, I don't know if many people caught this, but the Hawks and the Hornets would actually end up doing business together by trading Dwight Howard. The Hawks said... Man, they're doing too much now, bro. Well, Come on this now. This one is pretty interesting. When Grandpa Garnett was desperately looking around for a pair of clippers so he could cut out coupons for some chicken nuggets, Kevin Love said this. He just saved a bunch of money with State Farm by combining your home and auto insurance. You know what? It is a good deal. It's always save the $2 off the amount of nuggets. Oh, I love nuggets. That's crazy because the following year, before the draft, Cleveland was actually discussing a serious three-way trade involving Indiana and Denver that would send love to one other than the Nuggets, wow. while the Cavs would receive Paul George. It wow. obviously didn't happen, but if you think about it, those very words might have very well came into play and was almost spoken into existence. Now, the last one was when Baby Dane blurted this out, responding to KG's Clipper search. I need to cut these coupons. But I can't find one good clipper in this house. I can't win. I bet you if you look hard enough, you find two good clippers around here. Look at these looking. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Where? No good clipper. Which was just another sentence that eventually blossomed into fruition. By him saying no good clippers, it basically meant bad clippers. As you all know, Chris Paul would be traded to the Houston Rockets in 2017, while Blake Griffin, JJ Redick, and DeAndre Jordan were all either on the trading block or were seriously considering... This was such an elite team, bro. They were having some real problems within the organization, and it looks like Baby Dame saw it coming. Now sure, these might seem pretty insignificant individually on their own, but collectively, with them all taking place in the same offseason, it's definitely worth talking about. We're gonna end things by taking- Go James! Go, 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 James! Initially. Oh wait, no, JR. Said that his dream NBA Finals matchup would be between the Lakers and Heat. Back when the season was still young, we didn't really think much of it because he did only say that due to the amazing weather that those cities have. But when JR Smith came out and said the same thing, we should have took it more seriously. 
All the way back in February, yes, even before the season was suspended, J.R. Smith already had a strong feeling about what the NBA Finals would look like. Quote, Bored on this flight, let's knock out some questions. Who do you think will be in the NBA Finals? Lakers and Miami. Call me crazy, but... And that's exactly what many fans did. Put the Lakers in the... In the, in the uh, who? The finals. Bro, nah. Miami's you're doing too much now. Let's be honest. Who was balling more than Miami and Lakers before the bubble? Come on. Everybody was saying Giannis and, and the Bucks. All he was saying, man, he don't think Miami could do it. That's all. I mean, Bucks could do it. That's all. So stop making it seem like it's more than what it actually is, bro. Really and truly. To get there at the beginning of the season did not look very promising. There was no way. JR was just crazy, right? Well, no. He obviously turned out to be correct. And the rest is history. So did Boy, JR know something? JR ride two rings. I asked that question because he then proceeded Boy. to sign with the Lakers just a few months later after that post. So maybe he knew all along. You never really know. So there you have it, guys. Multiple warning signs. That Man. Oh, this is cap, bro. Really and truly. It's just bad cap. That's all it is. It's bad cap. Come on, man. All this stuff, you're going to the Kobe 1, 4 plus R. What is it, 11 plus 10 or something? Whatever you say. I know, it's not 11 plus 10, obviously. Oh, God. Acid, acid reflux. reflux. But yeah, man. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, man. Bad cap, bad cap. If you guys want to see more reaction videos from me, smash that like button, subscribe, or like your stuff down below. Alright, and you guys will get more videos from me. With that being said, I hope you guys have an amazing day. Be happy, be blessed, and the world is yours. Peace.